I have been an attorney doing animal law exclusively for over 35 years, civil and criminal animal cases, state and federal animal cases, <clears throat> trial level and appellate animal cases, and transactional work on animal cases as well as litigation. Over that lengthy period, I have frequently found that in the interviews of potential clients, in explaining legal issues to actual clients to help them make wise decisions, in arguing cases to judges and juries, in fact, in discussing all sorts of matters with opposing counsel, with lay persons, with jurists, it sometimes helps foster good communication about an animal-related legal topic by referring to movies. Now, without trivializing any person or topic, and without belittling the seriousness of anyone's claim or their defense, linking a concept to a scene in a movie unquestionably helps relate odd legal concepts to people in a comfortable, recognizable, familiar way. For example, whenever the topic has arisen about the possibility of a litigant seeking damages for becoming distressed over the death of their pet, and raising, therefore, the consideration of the tort intentional infliction of emotional distress, IIED, I have found it's often helped explanation when I mention the rabbit scene in that classic movie from the 1980s, Fatal Attraction. As you may recall, in the movie, Michael Douglas is married to Ann Archer, but gets romantically involved in an extramarital affair with Glenn Close. When he tries to end the affair, Glenn Close becomes quite angry and, solely to hurt the couple, she boils their pet rabbit in a pot in the kitchen for Ann Archer to find when she comes home. Now, the serial facts that A, Glenn Close isn't angry at the rabbit, but at a person. B, Glenn Close uses the rabbit simply as the conduit through which to severely distress a person. And C, the act of boiling a rabbit alive is immediately recognized as outrageous. Those are all excellent cultural representations of what IIED probably is in an animal-related case. I want to spend time today explaining a few animal law rules, and in doing so, referring to movies along the way, and I'm not promising any perfect one-to-one -one correlation between what I explain and any cinematic example, since, of course, movies come from the minds of screenwriters, not lawyers, and the legally accurate is invariably jettisoned in favor of the overly dramatic and sometimes just the absolutely ridiculous. But legal concepts can always use illustration and reflection, and visually, there are scenes in movies that may help us as lawyers ourselves grasp certain ancient and difficult rules in a novel manner. Let's start with concepts of animal ownership. Those who claim to own an animal always begin with the bare assertion that, well, they just are the owner. Under the common law, however, that is what one would call a necessary but not a sufficient condition. It is relatively easy to observe that the ownership of animals is fairly fact-bound. What is more difficult to grasp, however, is just what facts are or are not significant to the determination. In our second movie, the Muppet movie, you may have enjoyed the scene where Ralph the Dog sings a classic song at the piano, and in the song mentions taking himself for a walk and putting himself to bed, in a sense claiming that he owns himself as a dog. And we laugh at the lyrics in the scene as if it's a simple Muppetlicious type of joke, but there's actually a lot of complicated ideas going on at that piano. Folded into Ralph's short performance are centuries of common law rules which we know about, but don't often have any reason to specifically articulate out loud. For instance, we know that A, animals aren't legal entities which are able to own anything. B, that people, which is what Ralph sounds like, don't own themselves as if people were properties. But C, that dogs, which is what Ralph looks like, are owned properties, yet themselves, D, don't get to be the ones to make the decision as to who their owner is. So reciting the phrase, well, dogs are property, that doesn't really help explain much of anything. It actually just raises more questions, kind of like Ralph's song does. 
Property as a legal category has a lot of intricate moving parts, and the ownership of certain properties has its own set of questions attached to it that simply calling something property doesn't answer.